All right, here's some notes about uh, energy transfer, and then we're going to do LOL diagrams in a minute. So en energy transfer is, uh, another word for it is work. So when energy goes from one system to another. So we transfer energy into or out of a system when a, an external force is exerted over a displacement. So if it's, there's just a force, it doesn't mean I'm transferring any energy. So I have my water bottle here. I'm pushing up on it. I'm not exerting that force through a displacement, so I'm not transferring any energy to the water hole just because I'm pushing on it. So that displacement part is going to be important. Uh, we say the force is working on the system, or we can also say that the force is doing work on the system. So a couple different ways to talk about energy transfer here. Uh, we're going to use the variable delta E or the variable capital W uh, as the variable for energy transfer or work. So you've heard this phrase, energy is conserved. What that means is not we're not saving energy, like trying to not use a lot of it. It means energy can't be created or destroyed. The only two things it can do, it can be transformed or it can be transferred. Um, all energy must be accounted for during any energy transfer. So another way to think about that is the initial energy plus the change in the energy has to equal the final energy. So what you start with, then you account for any changes, any energy that left or um, was added to the system, that has to equal the final energy of the system. So mathematically, you can write it like this. Initial energy plus the work done on the system is equal to the final energy of the system. If energy transferred out, we call this negative work. And if energy is transferred into the system, we call this positive work. However, that positive or negative, we leave this here as a positive sign all the time. And what goes into this equation when we calculate it, that will end up being a positive, that will make that whole thing positive or negative. Energy is not a vector, it's a scalar. So we're not going to change the sign here in front of the positive, um, in front of the W, because the that sign is not the direction. So later when we have a formula to calculate the work done, Things in those, those formulas will have positive or negative signs, and that will make that term um, overall a positive or negative term. But when you write it, you just want to, in variables, write it as plus the work done, even if we're taking energy out of the system. So energy transformation. So we say energy is transformed when energy changes from one storage mode to another within the system. So if there's no external forces working on the system, energy is just being transformed from one storage mode to another. So most common example of this is if I'm in the system and the water bottle's in the system and the earth is in the system and I lift this, this up, there's no external forces acting on this. We're just transforming some energy to energy stored chemically, to energy stored kinetically or gravitationally. So that's energy transfer, energy transformation. Now let's go to LOL diagrams. So these LOL diagrams, it's a way for us to visualize the way energy transforms within a system and the way it transfers across systems. Um, the way to think about this is this is analogous to a force diagram in unit two when we did forces. So the LOL diagram gives you a visual of what's going on and we're going to use that to write our energy equation. This right here is our conservation of energy equation. It just says all the energy at the beginning plus any energy we added or took away has to equal the final energy. Energy can't be created or destroyed. So remember, energy transferred across systems through the work done by forces or components of those forces. And that uh, force has to be parallel to the system's displacement. And those forces are external to the system. So the force, if the system's moving this way, the force may not be 100% this way. It may be at an angle, but it can still move in the same direction. The component of that force is parallel to the displacement of the system. Uh, energy is transformed within a system by forces that are internal to the system. All right, so example 1A. We're going to do three examples here. If you look in your sheet, you'll notice that they are all the same, except we're going to change system every time. So what our system is is very, very important. So the first one, the system is the clay and the spring and the earth. I'll show you where to, you're going to write that down in the circle in the middle of your LOL diagram. I'll show you that in just a second. So a pro tip here, you've probably heard this before. Choose the lowest point in the problem to be the zero height for UG. So I'm going to say at the beginning here, is zero height for UG. And what's happening here is it's not moving, and then the spring is going to be released, and it's going to launch the clay up, and the clay is not moving at the top either. So does the system initially have any energy? Yes, it does. It has energy stored in the spring. 
Is the energy transferred into or out of the system? No. Since we pretty much have everything in the system, no outside forces, no work done in the system. So in our LOL diagram, so here's our L, here's our O, and here's our L again. So in our LOL diagram, we write whatever the system is here. So write clay and spring and earth. This is our system here. This is the energy stored in the system before, like at, initially at point A, if we want to have call these points A and B. And this is the energy stored at the end, um, at the end of the problem. Here's where we're going to show energy transferred going into the system. So if this is our system, any energy going in will be going into the system. Our energy, energy going out, we're going to show that right here in the O part. So first off, the system initially has energy stored elastically. So we go to our initial bar chart, and we're going to put some energy stored elastically. I chose four units there. The four units is arbitrary. You could choose eight, you could choose three, whatever. We aren't dealing with specific numbers yet. This is just to get a conceptual understanding of what is going on. So what happens then? We have an energy stored elastically in, this, um, in the spring, which is part of our system, and then it's launched up. So energy is going to be transformed into energy stored kinetically because it's going to be moving, and energy stored gravitationally because it's way up high. However, since our, our final point is when it's not moving, we do not put the energy stored kinetically in our final diagram. It doesn't matter what happened in between. We can, we're just looking at the beginning and the end. So we're going to have some UG in our system at the end. The only storage mode at the end is energy stored gravitationally. So we only have UG at the end. Even though it had kinetic in between, it doesn't matter what happened in between. So I have four units here because I know that I don't have any outside forces working on the system. So my energy at the beginning was four. I didn't add any energy. I didn't take any energy away. So the energy at the end has to be four. Energy must be conserved. So we can write this, that as a conservation of energy equation. The energy stored at the beginning, US, plus the work done, no outside forces working on the system, is equal to the energy at the final. So this equation tells us that the US is equal to the UG in this sense. In the future, you're going to be putting in your um, actual equations here. So like 1 half kx squared for US. And when we have the equation for UG, we'll be plugging that in as well. So example 1b, same scenario. Different system, clay and earth. Not the spring. The spring is not in the system. So does the system initially have energy? No, because the spring's not in the system. Is energy transferred into or out of the system? Yes, the spring is going to push up on that clay. And it's going to push up that clay over a displacement, so it's going to transfer energy into the system. And so now the system's going to have some energy, so the clay is going to fly up. So for our LOL diagram, uh, doesn't have any energy initially. What happens? A force is exerted on that clay through a displacement. So the um, what we need to show here is zero energy at the beginning, and now there's energy going into the system. I chose four blocks of energy to go in. Again, that's arbitrary. The way you're going to label this is this is work done, so W, by the force of the spring. So work done by the force of the spring. So this is energy going into the system. So I have zero energy plus four energy in. I have to have four energy at the end because I don't have any, any energy going out. So again, all the energy stored gravitationally. In it. Our equation, zero energy at the beginning, plus the work done by the force of the spring is equal to the energy stored at the end, which is gravitational. All right, example C. Same exact situation, different system. Now we're just going to have the clay. So only the clay is in our system, not the spring, not the earth. Does the system initially have any energy? No, the spring does not have uh, the clay does not have any energy initially. How is energy transferred into or out of our system? Well, the, the spring is going to be pushing up on the clay and, and it makes, you know, makes the clay move up. But the earth is also pulling down on the clay. And so we're going to have two forces working on our system here. So it doesn't have any initial energy. What happens? Two forces. So initially, nothing. I, this, I leave this blank. Now we need energy going in. This is the work done by the force of the spring. And now I need to have energy going out. So that the, because what's happening here is the clay pushes, or the, the spring pushes up on the clay. Clay's moving fast, but now at the end, the clay isn't moving fast. So what happened to that energy? Had to go somewhere. The earth, the work done by the force of gravity, took that energy out of the system. And you notice here that the clay's pushing up. 
or the spring is pushing up and the clay is pushing up and it's putting energy in. And the clay is also moving up, but the earth is pulling down and it's taking energy out. There's a pattern here that we're going to develop. So we put four energy in, we took four energy out, because at the end, this system has no energy. Because the earth is not in the system, so we can't have UG. It's not moving, so there's no energy stored kinetically. Um, the spring isn't in the system, so we can't have US. There's no friction or anything, so no E thermal, so there's no energy at the end. So I can, sometimes you have to work backwards. You have to say no energy at the end. So therefore, there must have been, since I put energy in, I must have taken some energy out. So the equation would be zero energy at the beginning, plus the work done by the force of the spring, plus the work done by the force of gravity is zero. Again, this is going to be positive right here. And then when we calculate things, we will um, that whole term will be, become negative. Um, if you put a negative in here, what happens is you then calculate with another negative, and you have a double negative, and it cancels out, and your answer is wrong. So just be aware of that. All right, here is example two for the LOL notes. 2A, so what this is, is we have a uh, person at the bottom of a ramp. They have a, a box, and they're going to push the box up the ramp. The ramp's box is going to slide up the ramp until it stops. There is friction between the block and the ramp. So we have to take that into account. So the first example, again, we're going to do the same scenario with different systems. Person, box, surface, and earth, everything. Everything's in there. Does the system initially have energy? Yeah. The person ate their Wheaties this morning, so they're going to have some energy stored chemically. Is energy transferred into or out of the system? Nope. Everything's in the system. No outside forces. So here's our LOL diagram. Notice we have the person, box, surface, earth, everything in there, defining what our system is. So there's e chem at the beginning. So I'm going to do four units of e chem. I just chose four. You could do three if you wanted. But what happens then? Are there any external forces? No external forces, but the system changes. It reconfigures itself. The box is now higher than it was before. So a couple things are going to happen here. One, we're going to have energy stored gravitationally when we didn't before. And also we're going to have some energy stored thermally because there's friction between the surface and the ramp, or surface and the box. So the energy stored chemically is transformed into other storage modes. It's going to be energy stored gravitationally. Now I chose three here. So I start off with four. I chose three. Now you could only have one unit of E-therm here because the energy at the beginning plus any of the work done has to equal the energy at the end. So 4 plus 0 equals 3 plus has to be a 1 there. If I did 2.5 here, then this would have to be 1.5. Just have to make sure that the total energy, um, uh, everything is taken, everything is uh, accounted for. You don't have any, any energy that disappears. All right, so the equation is E chem, no work done, plus UG, and E therm at the end. Again, in the end, we'll be writing uh, more specific equations for this when we get our physics equations for those energy storage modes. All right, example 2B, same exact thing. Person, box, and earth. What did we take out of the system? We took out the surface. So still E chem. Yes, there is energy transferred out. And in this case, there's going to be energy transferred out because of the force of friction. So as, and this may be backwards because of the video, but... Um, I guess we can look here. As the box goes up the ramp this way, the force of friction is being exerted down, is pointing down the ramp. So it's going up the ramp this way, friction is going this way. Friction is going to be stealing energy from the box. So uh, E chem, we start off with E chem just like we did before. What happens? So the energy stored chemically is being transformed into kinetic, into gravitational. Also, there's an outside force working on the system. That outside force is the work of, um, done by the force of friction. So I chose two boxes here. If I want to be consistent with 2A, I would probably just choose one box because I think we had one unit of E-therm in the end here. But uh, it doesn't matter too much in the end. We're just trying to get a conceptual understanding here. So if I had four boxes initially, I took two out, I can only have two left over. So four st stored chemically. Oh, ignore this dashed line here. Just don't worry about that. Four units of energy stored chemically at the end. Took two units of energy out from thermal, uh, the work done by friction. So that left the system because the surface is not in the system and the surface is heating up. Now we're only left with two units of energy stored gravitationally. So um, let's uh, do the equation. E chem plus the work done by the force of friction. 
is equal to the energy stored gravitationally. And this work done by the force of friction will end up being negative once you know an equation for that and you plug in the values for the things in that equation, that will come out negative. You just want to avoid the double negative for now. So let's do it again. System, box, and earth. So does the system initially have any energy? So what do we not have in here? We don't have the surface and we don't have the person. So no, there is no energy. The box and earth don't have any energy. It's box is at its lowest point. Is energy transferred into? Yes, the person is going to push this, the box, so it's going to exert a force through a displacement. And there's going to be a friction force that's going to be exerted through a displacement. So there's two outside forces working on the system. So just the box and the earth in our system has no energy initially. So this first L is blank. What happens? Well, the person is going to put some energy in. They're going to push the box. They're going to push the box up the ramp, and the box is going to move up the ramp. So they're going to put some energy into the system. So I'm going to say they put in four units of energy in. Again, just choose that number arbitrarily. It doesn't matter where on the circle you draw this, but the, whether it's going in or out, that's the super important part. So four units of energy going in, but there's friction taking some energy out. So two units of energy going out. Again, you could do one, you could do three. Doesn't, we don't really know the specifics. So if I put four in, take two out, I am left over with two at the end. So two units of UG at the end. And then the equation... We steal it right from this LOL diagram. So zero energy here. And I have work done by friction and work done by the push. So I have both of those. Oops, there should be a plus sign in between there that must have gotten blocked out. So plus the work done by friction plus the work done by the push is equal to the energy stored gravitationally at the end. All right, that's the end of these examples.